Astronomical occurrences like eclipses, supernovas and even meteor showers are all possible in your lifetime. And with a set of binoculars, a modest telescope or even the naked eye, you can observe a variety of celestial events which includes the next supernova that is bound to happen in the next 50 years. The last supernova that was discovered three decades ago outside our galaxy had the power of a hundred million suns. These astronomical shows of your life are not something you should miss. So get your telescopes and calendars ready as we present to you the biggest astronomical shows that will happen in your lifetime. From a flyby asteroid to meteor showers to the extremely special death of a star. Let's get started. The Total Solar Eclipse, August 2nd, 2027. Those born with wanderlust should mark their calendars for August 2nd, 2027 in order not to miss out on seeing the best of what our world has to offer. Yes, that'll be in five years, but once word gets out about this once in a lifetime event, tens of thousands will be trying to get to the Valley of the Kings, Luxor, Egypt, to gaze skyward at 12.02 p.m. local time. The instant the moon blocks out the sun and casts a moon shadow over the Earth will begin at that exact moment and last for an incredible six minutes and 23 seconds. It's the only moment you can see the sun's outer hotter ice white corona and the view is bookended by spectacular diamond rings created by beads of light streaming through the moon's mountains and valleys. This century's longest total solar eclipse will take place on August 2nd, 2027 for those who are in the path of totality that day. Although a lengthier eclipse occurred in 2009, it occurred over the ocean and was mostly obscured by clouds. The total solar eclipse in 2027 will be the longest totality on land since 1991 and until 2186. Number 4. Near-Earth Flyby of the Asteroid Apophis, April 13, 2029. Apophis is a three-and-a-half football-field-sized asteroid that will pass between the Moon and Earth on April 13, 2029. The asteroid, found in 2004, generated some concern and was temporarily classified as a potentially hazardous object. When it was initially identified, astronomers estimated that the asteroid had a 27% chance of colliding with Earth. Fortunately, NASA has determined that Apophis will miss Earth by 31,300 kilometers, but it will still be the closest asteroid flyby in history. It may also provide an excellent opportunity for further investigation. The asteroid was originally given the designation 2004 MN4, but following additional study, it was given the permanent number 000042 and the name Apophis by its discoverers. The name Apophis comes from the Greek version of Apep, a demon from Egyptian mythology who was Ra's archenemy. However, as ominous as that seems, it's possible that's not the major basis for the name. Co-discoverers Dave Tholen and Roy Tucker, according to a 2005 report in Astronomy magazine, were major fans of Stargate SG-1, a science fiction TV series whose most prominent adversary was named Apophis. How horrible would it be if Apophis struck? It would be awful albeit the exact degree is unknown because it would depend on the makeup of the asteroid. Even the best calculations show how disastrous it would be. When the year 2029 arrives, along with Apophis, the scientific community will launch a big thorough observing campaign. Some of the large telescopes now under construction will be operational by 2029. We still have a lot to learn about asteroids, and when one gets this close, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. 
Asteroids will always be a threat to Earth, and the more we learn about them, the more prepared we will be to deal with them. Number 3. The Leonid Meteor Shower Meteor showers, the debris left behind by comets as they pass by, cause the Earth to travel across their path. The Leonid Meteor Shower occurs as the Earth travels through the Temple Tuttle comet's orbit. The Leonids have a long history of causing storming. The Leonid Shower of November 1833 was approximately 200 years ago, and it was the first big meteor storm of contemporary times. That well-known shower had a significant impact on the scientific study of meteors. It's one of the reasons the Leonids are so well known. Meteors were assumed to be atmospheric phenomena like rain or snow before the 1833 Leonid storm. In 1865, astronomers discovered a comet that was named after its discoverers, Comet Temple Tuttle. The orbit of the comet around the Sun was discovered to be roughly 33 years long. In November 1866, some prophesied that another Leonid meteor storm would occur, and it did. As a result, the Leonid meteor shower of 1833 contributed to the discovery that meteors in yearly showers originate in comets. Every year, Earth passes the orbital path of Comet Temple Tuttle, as we now know. The yearly Leonid shower is caused by debris from this comet burning up in the Earth's upper atmosphere. A Leonid storm appears only when the comet is close by. The last great Leonid meteor storm occurred in 1966, when millions of people across North America witnessed 100,000 shooting stars per hour. Because meteors in yearly showers, such as the Leonids, all originate from a single radiant point in our sky, some witness of the shower in 1966 observed that the impression of Earth's movement through space was so powerful that they almost needed to grip the ground. Since then, the Leonids have put on numerous spectacular shows, but none have compared to the one in 1966. It takes the comet slightly over 33 years to complete its orbit around the Sun. The closest it came to our Sun was on February the 28th, 1998, when it was at the perihelion. Precipitation for this celestial body is set for November 20th, 2031. As a result, the next Leonid storm won't arrive for some time. Number 2. Halley's Comet, Midway 2061 to 2062 Although the renowned comet named after the astronomer Edmund Halley only comes by Earth once every 76 years, its sightings have frequently played a surprising impact on historical events. There have been many theories as to what comets mean throughout history, ranging from divine omens to atmospheric abnormalities to celestial wanderers. Early observers were both fascinated and terrified by Halley's Comet. The appearance of a celestial visitor was thought to be a bad omen, and it was linked to everything from a king's death to natural disasters. All of that began to change in 1705, when Edmund Halley, an English astronomer, published his Synopsis Astronomia Cometicae, new ideas on the origin of three comets that appeared in 1531, 1607 and 1682 were discovered by Halley utilizing Sir Isaac Newton's gravitational theories. The comet orbited the Sun once every 76 years, according to Halley and he predicted that it would reappear in late 1758 or early 1759. In the end, Halley was proven correct on all counts. Even though he died in 1742, his comet appeared in the sky on Christmas Eve 1758, exactly on time. It was hailed as a triumph of scientific reasoning and Newtonian physics when it was discovered. Comet 1P slash Halley, as it is officially known, may have been flying through the solar system for up to 200,000 years, according to scientists. 
the Halley's Comet was only observed a couple of times by Edmund Halley, but other researchers have mapped out its prior appearances and unearthed historical allusions stretching back to the ancient world. Also, the comet may have found its way into artwork. It is reported that Italian artist Giotto painted Halley's Comet as the Star of Bethlehem in his painting Adoration of the Magi when he saw it in 1301. For the first time, astronomers were able to investigate Halley's most recent visit in 1986 with advanced technology. From Earth, high-powered telescopes were aimed at the comet and five unmanned space probes known as the Halley Armada flew by it during its transit. One of them, the European Space Agency's Giotto, got as close as 370 miles to the nucleus of the comet. For the first time, probes returned high-quality photographs that shed light on Halley, including concluding that its core is a solid mass made up of dust and ice. However, there is still plenty of time before the famous comet returns to the inner solar system in July 2061. Thus, no space agency has yet declared plans for a follow-up mission. Number 1. A Supernova Explosion Stars that have reached the end of their lives explode in a spectacular display of light known as a supernova. During this collapse, the star's outer layers are ejected, becoming a black hole. Stars die in different ways depending on their mass. Our Sun, for example, lacks sufficient mass to erupt as a supernova. Though the news for Earth still isn't good, because once the Sun runs out of its nuclear fuel, Potentially in a couple of billion years, it will inflate into a red giant that will likely annihilate our world before gradually cooling into a white dwarf. Our sun will never be able to produce the amount of energy a supernova produces in its entire lifetime. According to NASA, the largest explosion that takes place in space is a supernova. Long before the telescope was invented in the 17th century, Various civilizations recorded supernovae. RCW 86, discovered by Chinese astronomers in AD 185, is the oldest known supernova. According to their records, this guest star was visible in the sky for eight months. According to European Space Agency research, a supernova occurs on average once every 50 years in a galaxy the size of our Milky Way. This indicates that a star bursts somewhere in the cosmos every 10 seconds or so. Outside of our galaxy, the last supernova was discovered three decades ago. It blazed with the brightness of 100 million suns and was one of the brightest exploding stars in 400 years. It is predicted that the next supernova will occur in our galaxy within the next 50 years, according to researchers at Ohio State University. There's a 20% chance it'll be seen without a telescope, otherwise a telescope will be required. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.